Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. The Bible is a book of covenants and God is relational and he wants to have relationship with us. He's so serious about that relationship with you and me that he establishes it as a covenant. Meaning this is a solemn oath because God is very serious about relationship. And he keeps this covenant for a thousand generations. Meaning, look, this is a covenant that he's going to keep it. He's going to stand by this through time. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God. We'd encourage you as you tune in to these weekly telecasts to uh, invite other people to join with you uh, to listen to the Word of God and study the Word of God together. And uh, if you're able, to, we just encourage you to form a little Bible study group around the telecast. Maybe gather together half an hour ahead and spend time in worship and prayer and then listen to the ministry of the Word of God, pray together and uh, discuss the Word, discuss what you've heard so that uh, you could you know, uh, exchange your learnings and learn from each other and just build a little uh, Bible study around the weekly telecast that come your way. Also, uh, in case you're not able to uh, stay tuned with us on a weekly basis, we encourage you to use our church website. All our TV programs are available online for free. You also have access to our Sunday sermon recordings that you could uh, listen to. Uh, make use of these, form uh, Bible study groups around these and, and uh, use them are to grow together in your journey of faith. Over the last several weeks, we've been talking about covenant. Uh, we've been looking at different aspects of God's covenant with us and what God desires to do uh, as He invites us to be a people who are in covenant with God. Now, on the program today, as we continue our study of the covenant, we want to talk about the new covenant. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34, Jeremiah prophesied, he foretold, God said, the time will come 
when I will establish a new covenant with my people. And one of the distinctives of the new covenant, God says there in Jeremiah 31, verses 30, 31 to 34, is that I will write my word in your heart and in your mind. Meaning this work is a work that goes past the outside of you having to follow rules and regulations, but it's something that will work from inside out. My law, my word will go into your heart and into your mind. And it, from within you, you will say, let us seek after God. Let us go after God. So God was foretelling or speaking it at once through the prophet Jeremiah. And we also see it in uh, uh, the 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. But God is saying, I will, do, I will set up a new covenant. But this covenant is a covenant that works from inside out. Rather than something that you try to follow through your external practices and rituals and sacrifices and so on. So when we come into the New Testament, we see the Lord Jesus as he uh, uh, ministered and as he was about to go to the cross, just prior to his death on the cross, as he sits down at a meal with his disciples. He takes the bread, he takes the cup, and then he begins to speak words which they probably did not hear him speak up until that time. Jesus says here, I'm reading from Matthew, the 26th chapter, verses 26 to 28. It says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So here now, Jesus starts to use covenant language. He begins to talk about covenant. He says, I'm setting up a new covenant with you. Eat my, eat my body, drink my blood, using the bread and the cup as symbols. And he's inviting them into this covenant, this new covenant that he is going to set in place. And this, what we refer to as the Lord's table, which we continue to practice uh, as we gather together as believers, some, people, some may do it at home, some may do it uh, as a congregation, so on. But this Lord's table, which he instituted, is representative, is symbolic, is speaking about the covenant that Jesus brought in place through his death on the cross and by him giving himself up uh, and shedding his blood on the cross. And he says, I am bringing this new covenant into force. So, we understand that this new covenant that Jesus set in place is a blood covenant because it had to do with his body and blood. He says, this is my body, I'm giving it for you. And here is my blood, you partake of it. So this is a blood covenant. Now, the Jewish people with whom Jesus was sitting, of course, they understood the significance of the blood covenant. As we had mentioned in one of our earlier tel telecasts, the blood covenant is the most powerful, the strongest kind of covenant anybody can enter into. Because it is a covenant that says life for life. I give my all and I want you to give your all if you enter in to this blood covenant. And so these people understood the significance of what was happening. A blood covenant being set up here. And as we eat that bread and drink the cup, we are saying we are becoming one with you. We are entering in to this covenant with you. And we're embracing this covenant with you. It's a blood covenant. That means I'm willing to give my life, even as you are, willing, are, are going to give your life. I'm giving my all to you as you give your all to me. And uh, Jesus Christ himself becomes the testator, the one who institutes this new covenant. He himself becomes a mediator, the one who enforces this new covenant uh, with us. And uh, we are recipients, we are partakers of this new covenant that he set up. So I'll just read from here in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 to 18. The Bible says, and for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. 
Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. I just want to point out something interesting here. The Hebrew word for covenant, the most common Hebrew word for covenant, uh, we mentioned it earlier, is the word brit, which means to cut a covenant. And it has the idea of the shedding of blood to bringing a covenant in force. Now, what is interesting is when you come to the New Testament scripture, in New Testament scripture, uh, the word for covenant really is the word that is used for testament or will. It's the equivalent word so uh, uh, for the old, old Hebrew word brit, but the New Testament word that is used most commonly for covenant has to do with the establishing or bringing a will or a testament in force. Slightly different from cutting a covenant, but the similarity is the, the New Testament or the New Covenant is also a covenant that comes into force through the shedding of blood. The difference is this. The emphasis here is about a testament. Uh, it's about a will that comes into force after the death of the testator, the person who wrote the will. Uh, only after he dies can the will be enforced. The other distinctive about the New, Test New Covenant is this that it is unilateral, meaning when a will is written, it is purely the expression of the heart of the person writing the will. That means it, it, it is completely his endowment or that person's endowment for the people to whom uh, the person wishes to give things as an inheritance, as a blessing. It's unilateral. The recipients do nothing. They don't earn it. They, don't, they have not worked for it. They are just recipients of whatever is being endowed to them. And so that's, that's some distinctives here in the New Testament or the New Covenant. It is a written will that has come into force after Jesus Christ died on the cross. It's something that he gave himself up for. It is brought in, it is a new, it is a blood covenant because Jesus very clearly indicated that it is by the shedding of blood. It is a, the new covenant in my blood. So it is a blood covenant. It is as powerful. Uh, as the old covenant idea of bl the blood covenant. But the other feature that we are trying to highlight here is the language used in the New Testament ha has to do with that of a will being put in force after the person who wrote the will dies. And, and that's uh, descriptive of what happened when Jesus uh, uh, established the new covenant. And we are just recipients of everything he wants to endow to us through the new covenant. He's saying, this is my will. I'm written this for you. I am dying. I'm giving myself up. And now that will is in force. And I stand as the mediator of that will. I'm here to make sure that what I have written will be enforced for you and in your life. A few other important things about the new covenant. And we will, uh, in an upcoming episode, we will definitely talk about the, disti the distinction between the old and the new. But let's highlight a few things about the New Covenant. The Bible tells us here that uh, in Hebrews chapter 8 that this New Covenant is based upon better promises. Hebrews 8 in verse 6 says, But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. So the New Covenant covenant that you and I are part of or invited to be a part of is, first of all, the Bible says it is a better covenant, better than the old covenant, and it is based on better promises, meaning these promises that are available to us in the new covenant, what God is giving to us in the new covenant is far greater, is far superior than what the people under the old covenant experienced. That means this covenant that we are in uh, brings a lot more, makes a lot more available to us than what was experienced by the people under the old covenant. So the new covenant has come into force and it is a better covenant. Another important highlight about the new covenant is this, that it is a covenant of grace. Under the new covenant, the work has been completed and we just have to receive it and walk in obedience to what God instructs us to do. But there is no more continual offering of sacrifices for sin as happened under the old covenant. 
Under the old covenant, people had to come every day or on a regular basis to bring their offerings as sacrifices to atone for their sins. Every year, the high priest went in on the day of the atonement uh, to make a sacrifice, to make atonement for the entire nation. And this happened year after year after year. But when you come into the new covenant, it's a covenant of grace because a work has been completed. Jesus offered himself up once and for all, an offering for sin, so that we no longer need to offer sacrifices to atone for our sins. All we do is by grace, through faith, receive what Jesus completed for us through his sacrifice. Another important aspect of this new covenant is that it is a more glorious covenant, as we read in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. It's a glorious covenant. It offers greater glory, makes greater glory available to us by the work of the Holy Spirit. Under the old covenant, people had to strive. They had to make their own effort, trying to keep the law, trying to abide by the instructions God had given them. But under the new covenant, Paul brings out this so clearly to us that it is the work of the Holy Spirit working in us, that the Spirit of God is working in us, changing us from glory to glory, taking us from one level of experiencing God's working in our lives to another level, from glory to glory. It's an onward, progressive journey uh, entirely by the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so we just yield to the work of the Holy Spirit and we move from glory to glory. The sign and the seal of the new covenant, of course, uh, is the new birth, which is a circumcision of the heart. And you can draw a comparison, and the Bible draws a comparison of that with the circumcision under the old covenant. That was a, a natural act. But for the new covenant believer, the heart is circumcised. When God says, in you, within you, I remove away what is unclean and what is unnecessary. I circumcise your heart. And that's a seal of the new covenant in the heart and the life of the believer. And uh, the two sacraments that Jesus gave to us, the Lord's table, is a constant reminder to us. Every time we partake, we are proclaiming that we are people of the covenant, that we are proclaiming that we are, have a covenant with God. And that's why the Lord's table is so powerful. We are declaring our blood covenant with God. We are declaring that we have this great, better covenant, better promises, and more glory available to us through the shed blood of Christ. And each time we partake of the Lord's table, we should expect uh, the blessings of the new covenant to flow through our lives. Now, as part of the new covenant, of course, we offer up spiritual sacrifices to God, uh, just like the people in the old covenant. They brought their daily sacrifices and they celebrated various feasts under the old covenant. In the new covenant, we offer up our spiritual sacrifices of praise, of worship, of prayer, of uh, living a life of holiness and purity before God. These are spiritual sacrifices that we offer, not in order to make the covenant any better. Remember, it's a covenant. It's already a better covenant. It's a, it's a testament that has been purely set up by the Lord Jesus. But the reason we offer spiritual sacrifices is because we, it is an expression of the fact that we are in covenant with God and God is at work in our lives and we are offering thanks, we are offering praise to God as people who are in a covenant with God. So the sacrifices that we do take on a completely different reason or a completely different meaning uh, as compared to the sacrifices being offered under the old covenant. They did it in order to obtain something. We do it because we have already obtained And we are celebrating what God has done for us. And we're doing it out of thankfulness, out of gratefulness. And saying, God, you've done all this for us. And we're just thankful. There's nothing more that we could do to add to this covenant. We're just recipients. And we are worshiping God. And we are offering these sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, as an act of our gratitude towards God. And remember, ultimately, this new covenant invites us to a place of friendship with God. The Lord Jesus put it like this in John 15. He said, I have called you my friends. Now that's amazing. And he says, look, that's what I want you to be. I I don't want you to be my servants. I've called you to be my friends. 
because a servant does not know what his master does. But you are my friends, and I have shared everything with you. See, that is the purpose, and that is the, 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 the reason for the new covenant, for us to come into this place of friendship, for us to come into this place of uh, intimacy, of closeness with God. And, and because of this new covenant, we come boldly to the very presence of God and enjoy fellowship with God. And that has been made available to us as people of the new covenant. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in God's Word as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders and miracles. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. We've tried to do a quick uh, new t a survey of the New Testament and highlight some features uh, of the New Covenant. We're going to cover a little bit more in the upcoming telecast on what it means to live under the New Covenant and how we can enjoy the New Covenant in everyday life. So continue to stay tuned as we uh, progress further in the series on talking about covenant. Before we uh, close today on the program, I want to pray with you. And as a person who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to pray God's covenant blessings over your life. I want you to agree with me and let's just take a hold of what God has made available to us through this new covenant that He has established with us through His Son, Jesus Christ. There is healing, there is deliverance, there is the blessing of God over our lives. There is a working of God coming into our circumstances and situations made available to us through the new covenant. So let's pray together and believe God for this to happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person watching. I pray for the release of your healing power right now, God, to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to break every yoke of the devil of sickness and disease and infirmity and trouble over the minds. I command the bodies and the minds of people to be made whole right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for the release of your divine provision in their lives, that circumstances will change, that needs will be met, that the peace of God be released into their lives, and that they experience God the fullness of the blessings of this wonderful, better covenant that is based on better promises that Jesus Christ has given to us. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's Word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that All People's Church is doing across India.
Many young people seeking to be trained and equipped for Christian ministry desire an opportunity for hands-on involvement in ministry as well as interact, observe and work alongside mature ministers. All People's Church Bangalore is offering a paid two-year ministry intern program with the opportunity for full-time employment with All People's Church upon satisfactory completion. During this two-year ministry intern program, you will attend classes from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Serve in various areas of ministry with All People's Church in Bangalore. Interact with APC's pastors, staff and ministry leaders. Brochure with details about the ministry intern program and the ministry intern application form can be downloaded from apcwo.org slash ministry intern.